Happy Friday, and welcome as always to our Friday night barbecue party where you always have an invite. You're always welcome to chill with us. Grab yourself a drink, kick back, relax. We've got another fun recipe. As always, Kansas City Jens right in the sidelines here, keeping me in line and keeping me informed as to what's going on out there. We really appreciate you being here as always. Can you believe it? We're on episode six of Friday Night Barbecue Party. Cheers to that. Six episodes. I'm not dead yet. We're rolling. We're strolling. We're going. And that's all thanks to you. So thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're on Twitch or on YouTube. We appreciate it greatly. Cheers. We have beautiful weather here today. Oh, party Fallon already at the start of the barbecue party. Beautiful weather. 85 degrees here in Minnesota in October. We'll probably get two feet of snow next week, but you know what? We're going to enjoy today like it's summer. So I have got a dish for you that's number one, super easy to do, number two, super delicious, and number three, on a hot day like we had today, it's going to make you feel refreshed, it's going to make you feel full, and you're going to have a real time. That's right. We're going to be doing kofta style pitas. What is kafta? What? What did you say? That's a made-up word. This time I can assure you it is not. Even though I do speak fluent Montucky and I've been known on occasion to make up a word or six, this time it is not. So kafta is in reference to a style of meat prepared in Turkey, or as they would call, Turkish. What? No, we didn't. Yes, I did. So we're going to do a Turkish style which you may be familiar with Turkish style dishes. They often come in kebabs. It's so warm, I even got little bugs flying around. Last week, no movement. We got a little bit of friends out here joining us. But yeah, we're gonna take it to a little bit different cuisine style tonight. You're gonna love it. We're gonna be working with ground beef. You don't have to do anything super weird because people get freaked out by weird meats. But if you wanted to use, you know, lamb or pork or whatever, you could definitely, it's about the seasoning, right? That makes it in this Turkish style. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to make kofta style pita parties. So it's kind of a take on the American hamburger, right? Ah, people popping in. Thank you for joining us. We're just talking kofta, right? And I'm probably not even saying it right. They're probably like, that hick, he said everything with the strong vowels. No. Anyways, we're going with the Turkish style. It's a take on a hamburger, but in a fresh, new way. And he even has an awesome little sauce that goes with it. Yeah. Yeah, we ain't going ketchup and mustard. We're going to take that up to a whole nother level of flavor. That's right. So much flavor, as always, off the screen. So we might as well jump right into it. It's Friday night. You're only going to have drinks for so long, right, before you're like, I got to turn this off. It's time to really party. So let's get started. We are going to be using beef, but not just any beef. I'm using some Wagyu ground beef. Super delicious, super fun. So I'm going to use a bowl, I'm going to use a big bowl, and I'm going to get my gloves on because I'm going to be touching vegetables and other things, and what? We don't want to cross-contaminate. Oh no, we don't. So let's get gloved up and let's jump right into the cooking action. If you've never joined us before, oh, that's what happens when you buy gloves that are just a little too small. These were the only size they had available, and they're medium. And with my giant Montana man hands, I require a size larger, larger. But they'll work for what we need to do, right? Right. All right. So I've got a couple of packages here of Wagyu ground beef that I got from Crowd Cow, right? That's like online sourcing where they, where they uh, pick up their meat from like local farmers. What we got there? Skulls and Bones. Thanks for joining us, brother. He's part of the Beard Struggle crew and a Minnesota man. So, Skulls and Bones, I know you're a big fan, but you got to tell me what's going on with your Vikings here because I have the privilege of being with Miss Kansas City Jens. We are uh, big Chiefs fans in this household. But you got you to gotta let me know, man, what's going on up here. Not that it's really different from any year, because I've lived in Minnesota for quite some time, but man, it, it, it's ugly. So anyways, thank you for joining us. 
And who do the Vikes play this week? That's that's what I'm wondering too. I know you don't have any idea, but skulls and bones do. So right here, we're pulling out our ground beef, and we're going fancy. Fancy, right? Because it's Wagyu, right? Ground with Wagyu. What makes Wagyu beef? What you, I'm sure you've heard this term, and if you haven't, Wagyu is a region of Japan, right? And they raise their cattle there. And this isn't Japanese ground Wagyu, because otherwise I'd be broke, and I wouldn't have a computer to stream on and see all you fine folks. Because uh, Wagyu beef is super expensive when it comes from Japan. This is Americanized style of Wagyu. Uh, but Wagyu beef in its traditional form comes from Japan. And these cows are like fed an extremely special diet. They're restricted on activities and all kinds of stuff. So they can get super high levels of marbling, of fat. There's almost more fat in Wagyu that's from Japan than there is... Uh, actual meat it's crazy if you've seen it maybe we'll do one of those one of these days an actual wagyu steak and show people that'd be pretty rad uh but anyway so this is wagyu ground beef in the american style still high level marbling high level of fat and as we know when we're barbecuing and when we're grilling fat equals what and if you said me you are incorrect fat equals flavor my friends fat equals flavor because when that goes onto your grill, your smoke, or whatever you're cooking on, even if you're cooking on a skillet, that's all going to render down and go out through that meat. So fat equals flavor. In the Wagyu cattle, right, that is from Japan, or, you know, uh, Snake River Farms does American Wagyu here in the States, uh, that high fat content is going to go in through the meat, and that's what's going to give that beef that delicious flavor, besides all the seasoning. But like Japanese Wagyu, they take it, they sear it in like a deal of butter, just for like instances and you don't even have to chew it like melts in your mouth jen says weird not weird delicious deliciously weird right all right so we got our uh wagyu ground beef in the bowl that's great i'm gonna unglove here because i'm gonna need a fresh pair thank you for everyone for joining us it's friday night barbecue party give yourself a cheers i know i'm going to and now we got to season this meat up, right? Because we're doing the kofta style. So we're not just going to use your standard, boring salt and pepper. Salt and pepper are great. Salt and pepper are going into other things we're doing. But we're going to do this beef up with uh, some extra special stuff. We're going to actually uh, put some veggies in here and some other ingredients as well. Uh, and what I need to do first is we need to take give it a little smell here make sure there we go we're gonna grab some parsley it's dark out can you believe it's getting dark so early I can't I I'm getting old man I can't see I can't hear so I have to rely on my other senses like touch that doesn't come off as creepy at all uh, <laughs> or uh, smell and definitely not hearing but my other senses so I'm going to grab my trusty gun to Wilhelm here. Let's flip it over. Super easy. You can eat the stems of parsley. I'm going to just pull them off because I want all those greens. And we're going to roughly chop it up here. Keep your fingers out of the way. That's why we use the knuckles. You see how I got my hand here kind of like a raptor claw? Blah, blah, right? Keep that behind your blade, fingers back. And then you never raise your blade above those, and you don't lose a finger. You can actually, I'll flip it back over. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Then when you're cutting, you can actually look up, talk to people, and you're not going to lose anything because you got that guidance on your knife. The other thing is pinch grip, man. I preach the pinch, pinch grip. I'm putting words together. It's Friday night. Lighten up. Jed's over here judging me. There ain't no judging at the Friday night barbecue party. So what we're going to do is we're just going to roughly chop all this lovely parsley up. Get it good to go. And that's going to actually go in. You know, you've seen me use it in a, as a garnish. And that's something that uh, Chef Ramsey frowns upon. Because it's, it's like, it's old. It's old. It's old. Yeah, they don't do that anymore. I like it, so I do it. If you like something in your cooking, you like the flavor, don't worry about what everyone else says. 
do it. If it makes you happy, if you like the flavor, do it. Go back over here. Get a fine, fine chop on that parsley. About a half, huh? We do love Chef Ramsay. I do love, he's a hero of mine. Someday we will meet him. All that's going to go in the bowl. That's going to go in with our beef, parsley. Bam. Step one, done. All right? So parsley's in there. Then we're going to chop up some garlic. I love the smell of fresh garlic. That's my other tip for you. When you're buying ingredients, get as much fresh stuff as you can. If it's in season or whatever, go to the fresh produce. That parsley there, you're like, man, I don't have money to buy all these fresh ingredients. When you're buying fresh ingredients, it's cheaper. They don't have to put it in packaging. They don't have to put it on a shelf. It doesn't have to be shelf stable, you know, when you're buying seasonings and things like that. Parsley cost me 99 cents for more than I even needed tonight. So I have parsley for other creative dishes that we'll do, like on Sunday for game day smoke down. So anyways, back to the garlic here. Pre-peeled these. Just make sure you get rid of that nub on the end that's got the little stemmy thing on it. You do not want that in your dish. We're gonna add garlic in here as well. And once again, go back over it. Choppy, choppy. You want everything as uniform as possible. Get nice and fine because it's going to cook in with the meat, right? So you don't want somebody eating their lovely kofta pita party here and get a giant chunk of freaking garlic in their mouth because that's going to ruin their dining experience, right? Skulls and bones, my man. You should have been here at our last uh, last game day smoke down on Sunday because we actually got raided, believe it or not, because that's a Twitch deal, but we actually got raided by a, about a dozen people from the country in Norway. So I was able to attach to the homeland there. It was pretty, pretty dope. Probably about what time do you think it is in Norway? Like 4 a.m. right now? Probably about that just after midnight and that was like at four o'clock so bison definitely you can do bison any sort of ground meat will work for this recipe I love bison super lean super flavorful but we're using uh, Wagyu ground beef in in this one tonight because I want that extra fat content because we're doing this we're gonna actually make these into burger style patties when we throw them onto the grill, right? And then uh, we'll break them up when we actually plate them into our pitas later. But absolutely, bison, super great meat to make burgers out of. And uh, if you're cooking with bison, especially in a burger form, we should do that. We should do bison burgers on an episode. Yeah, Wagyu is, is money. I love it too. Uh, but uh, Cooking bison burgers, you just got to make sure you don't dry them out, right, with overcooking. And there's a couple tips that I have, actually, that can help keep your bison burger moist and flavorful when you're grilling. All right, garlic. Bam. Going in. Easy peasy. So we got the garlic in. We got the parsley in. Now, let's add some spices. A lot of times, if you've watched our shows before and you've been here with us, right, you've seen us just use, like, barbecue rubs and barbecue seasonings. I'm a barbecue guy. That's where I got my start in cooking. That's where I got my start in competitive cooking. But this we're going to flavor up to take it to a different region of the world. So we're not just going to throw in your standard barbecue rub. Remember, always treat yourself when you're cooking. It makes it that much more enjoyable. Is Julia Childs would say hello. All right, so we got cardamom, we've got coriander, we've got some allspice, we've got cumin, and we've got turmeric. All right, all these spices. Yeah, we got a huge geese invasion. I wish my mic would pick this up. There's probably about 50 head of geese over us. 
If you didn't uh, see Wild Game Wednesday, we actually cooked up Canadian geese, which are all migrating right now. So we got geese coming over the top of us here in Minnesota all the time. So anyways, like I was saying, with these spices, they're all on the stronger end of the spectrum. They, they hear them. They heard them. <laughs> David Nelson, thank you for joining us, Coach. Vikings play the Seahawks, but really, who cares? <laughs> Yeah, you're a Chiefs fan now, right, Coach? But, yeah, that, that'll that probably be ugly. That'll probably be ugly. <laughs> Skulls and Bones says, I care. I care. You got to be careful, Coach, not to offend the Minnesotans. We got we got a local fan base to worry about. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm kind of kidding. <laughs> All right, so here we go. <laughs> We're starting game day Sunday early, apparently. No, no, that's not the Tomahawk. That's for the Vikings. But Dave says go Chiefs. He's happy about the Chiefs. I always used to, and, and if you're on YouTube and you're seeing uh, David Nelson's comments, full disclosure, that is, that is my dad. Super proud to have him as my dad. Best in the business. Also, that's why I call him coach, because he not only played football uh, at Fargo, so don't worry, Minnesota people. He actually played here uh, at Fargo Moorhead, and he's got Minnesota attachments. Uh, but won a championship at Fargo Moorhead, then went on to play World League, and then coached for many years and actually coached me. And he was actually tougher on me than anybody else, which I appreciate because <laughs> it's made me the lovely stud that I am today. But anyways, uh, thank you so much for being here, Dad. I really do appreciate it uh, as well. So anyways, let's get this meat spiced up here. So we're going to use uh, measurements in the teaspoon range, not tablespoon, teaspoon, right? Because all these spices that we're going to do are very strong. We want them to meld together. We don't want one to overpower the other. So we're going to use the super technical term. No, I didn't bring a teaspoon to measure. Jen's like, did you bring a teaspoon to measure? No, I didn't. bring. Everybody knows, and you should know too, do I ever measure when I'm cooking? Gen sometimes it's a good idea, and it is, uh, until you get more comfortable with your spices and things like that and you've used them. Uh, I definitely recommend measuring, but you'll get to the point when you've cooked enough, and we have some beginner cooks that join us on these streams and things that haven't cooked a lot. Uh, go ahead and measure. I've cooked a lot, so I'm always like, a pinch of that, a dash of this. But anyways, don't overdo it with your spices. So we're going to add in the official term dash of the cardamom then we're going to add in uh, some coriander a little dash of that start light start light then we're going to add in a little ground old all old spice all spice all these can be found at your grocery store nothing nothing crazy here nothing that you have to like track down in some weird black market. Then we're gonna add a little ground cumin. And then we are gonna add our turmeric powder. This is the turmeric, which smells really awesome. This is what's gonna give you that Middle Eastern, Turkish, you know, kind of uh, flavor that we're talking about when we're talking kofta. This is actually brand new. I actually just bought this one, so I might as well take the seal off. Don't use a ton of turmeric in my cooking, but when I do, it's usually because I'm inspired by a foreign land. All right. Then we're going to add turmeric. Beautiful color to it. Beautiful aroma. There we go. So we got parsley. We got garlic. We've got allspice, so we don't need to add salt. That's going to be salty enough on its own. Cardamom. And then what was the other one I added? That's right, coriander. All right, so all these are going to meld together, right? So don't overdo it. You can always add a little bit more. Start a little bit lighter if you're not measuring. But all these need to be roughly a uh, teaspoon or a little less. And I can actually post this to our website and put measurements on there if anybody actually wants to recreate it. Another thing you can do if you don't want to pull out all your spices or whatever 
if you're cooking outside, is you can mix all your spices together in like a little shaker and take them with you outside or dump them like that. Whatever you want to do. I'm not here to judge. That's Jen's job. Yar, 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 yar. <laughs> and we're going to glove up uh, and we're going to get our hands in here and we're just going to mix everything together. I'm loving the smell of that parsley already. I love uh, fresh herbs and spices when you can get them. Because when you start cutting into those, they just release that powerful aroma. And you're like, yeah, I'm on to something. Makes you feel good right at the start, right? We all like successes. So if you get that success, when you start cooking and you start seasoning right away, right? You're going to feel good about your cook all the way through. We use our senses when we eat. I always say this. So like I talk about it when we do presentation, you know, people eat with their eyes. Sense the other huge one, right? And that's seasoned just about perfectly. Don't take this the wrong way, but smell your meat. After you season it, you'll know if it doesn't smell like anything except ground beef, you went too light, man. You went too light. Work it together. Make sure everything is distributed nice and evenly. All right. There we go. I know the light's a little difficult to see there, but you can see that parsley, those parsley flakes in there, evenly distributed, looking good feeling good I'm gonna pop the gloves off now because we're doing we're gonna cook these in like a burger format right and then we'll break them up later into chunks so it's got that more authentic feel of like a Turkish meat if you were cooking like lamb or something like that similar to a, a hero gyro gyro piro hero miro dero however you pronounce it right no one asked you how you pronounce it you be careful over there <laughs> But we don't want things to stick, so we're just going to give our Traeger here. We got the Beast rocking. I got her at 225 and super smoke on. Super awesome. We're going to give those grates a good spray. One of the great things, and I, I cook on kettles, open fires, barrels, all kinds of different shit when I'm cooking. Uh, I use the Traeger a lot because, number one, it's super convenient. Number two, it has a ton of flavor. If you haven't noticed, I got my Traeger flag from our massive meatball hoagie hanging here in the background. Uh, but one of the great things, especially if you're just starting to cook, right? When we do competitions, we cook primarily on barrel cookers with live charcoal and live wood and all that kind of good stuff. A true low and slow authentic barbecue style or hot and fast, whatever. We do both. But uh, when I'm cooking at home, 90% of the time these days, I'm cooking on my Traeger. Here's one of the great things especially if you're newer to cooking or newer to grilling is it's goddamn damn near impossible i pulled that off without stuttering over myself to burn anything on a traeger because it's convection style cooking you're not dealing with like a kettle with a direct flame and we'll do some kettle cooking and things like that in future episodes and show you how to help mitigate those uh pitfalls that you can run into but uh there's a big heat deflector down the middle of the traeger right and the heat comes around. So if you're cooking in the middle, it's, like I said, damn near impossible to burn anything that you're actually cooking. All right. So let's form this meat up into patties, and then we'll start working on the rest of the accessories that will be going into our dish this evening. Yes? Yes. my size two small gloves here we go and we'll use our cutting board here so we can get everything laid out super nice huh blow the glove up and stretch them out I don't think that's gonna work real well for me <laughs> no but it'd be fun well if I glove up again we'll try it 
All right, as usual, and I know you've heard this if you tuned in before, we're making our burgers. We're going to do it. Pat them out about yay big. Fit in your hand here. But we want a nice, even side, right? Size all the way around. It's Friday. Worked all week. I can't talk anymore. But a nice thickness. When I talk size, I'm not talking width. I'm talking thickness, right? And the reason I'm saying that is because we want it to cook evenly. And then all these little patties that we're making here, we want them all to have relatively the same thickness. So everything finishes up at the same time, right? If you got a smaller grill or whatever and you can't do it, put everything on there and you're feeding people in shifts, at least you can have an expectation, right, when your first shift's done of meat you're cooking or whatever, when your next one's going to be done, and they'll all be done together. You're not going to be like, all right, one person can come over and eat. You can take a whole, you know, five or six burgers or whatever off it, even if it's just four at a time. If you're cooking on something small, uh, you take those off, put four more on. You feed everyone at the same time. We just pat them down. Make sure the edges, just tap them around. You see how we kind of, it's kind of like a little pizza pie, right? When the moon hits your eye like a Wagyu pizza pie, that's more. Jen loves it when I sing to her. I make her giggle. All right, so we're just forming up our patties here. Season them up Turkish style with our different blend of spices there. Big ones, turmeric, cardamom, and coriander. And of course in there we do have some fresh garlic and parsley. Like I said, these don't have to be perfect. They come apart a little bit, not a big deal because we're going to actually be taking these later and put them, pulling them into chunks so we can get that kind of authentic feel of a hero or a Turkish style dish. All right, almost there, almost there. When we get these going, we'll work on the other elements of our dish, which are not super complicated either. This is probably the most time consuming part of this dish. All right. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Somebody somebody back in the forest there is singing. And the neighbors are playing bags. Here in Montana Max National Park. <laughs> I should be wearing a turban. That's what my mom said. <laughs> Direct all hate comments back to Frankie Nelson. I'll be dropping her email on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> that is the wear of the people of Turkey. All right, here we go. One more. This guy's going to be a little bit smaller. That's all right. Not a big deal. If you got a little bit that's a little bit uh, left over that won't make the same size because he's not going to be as big as these other ones, just make him a little thicker. Make him a little thicker. And that way it'll cook relatively, relatively the same as your other ones if it's just got a little bit more width versus the sideways spatial. All right. Get that bowl out of here. Let's get them on the Traeger. Let's get things cooking here. We did oil down the grates. We don't want any sticky sticky. We're gonna cook these for a little while with the super smoke going to get that nice smoke flavor absorbed into the meat. 
Being that these are Wagyu patties and they have a higher fat content, they will absorb smoke much easier than a leaner beef. If you're cooking something in a burger style, right, you go to the grocery store, right, and you're like, all right, I'm going to buy some beef. There's lots of different types of beef, right? All right, we got all those on the Traeger. So you'll see that the different percentages, like 80-20, 90-10, all that kind of different stuff, uh, that's all meat to fat ratios when you're seeing those in the store. If you're cooking a burger, you want the higher fat ratio. So you want that 80 to 20. You don't want to buy the lean hamburger because it gives you flavor, right? And fat isn't bad for you as long as it's in moderation, right? So, and that's the thing with cooking too. We hear all these different things. Like it's like one week, it's like, Coffee makes you live 10 years longer if you drink three cups of coffee a day. And then you hear on the radio or what TV, and it's like, this just discovered if you drink more, more than one cup of coffee a day, coffee will kill you. I mean, life's too short to worry about all the crap that's coming out all the time with any sort of food or any sort of beverage like coffee or meat or whatever. Moderation, people. If you enjoy things in moderation, you're going to be just fine. If you eat anything or drink anything excessively... You're going to have problems. You know, you eat sticks of butter. You're going to have problems. Don't eat sticks of butter. Use butter because butter is delicious. Don't eat sticks of it. You know, if you like marshmallows, great. Make a s'more. Enjoy a s'more. Don't eat a bag of marshmallows a day. I saw a news story the other day. Some poor guy died because he loved black licorice. And he ate, he was like a construction worker, just some, you know, regular dude like you and me. And the dude ate a bag and a half of black licorice every day of his life. Like a big ass bag of black licorice, bag and a half every day while he was at work, ate it. And that's what killed him. Yet she's like, what? True story. But that's not moderating, is it? If you eat a bag and a half of freaking black licorice, like, come on, people, you know, like, enjoy life, enjoy your meals. In the grand like schema thing, right? So if you eat three meals a day, on average, right? Like that's what we're supposed to eat. I know a lot of us don't eat every breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but let's just say three meals a day, and you live to be roughly about here. Do quick math for me. You got a calculator? Now that would be a Montana faked up word. Calculator. You ready? Yeah. I'm going to throw Jen some numbers here. We're going to do some math, right? You ready? Yeah. All right. So we eat three meals a day, and that's 365 days a year. So three times 365. So we eat, give or take, 1,095 meals in a year. And this is just if you average three meals a day, right? Yeah. All right. Now let's say... Average lifespan, you know, it could be a little shorter, could be a little longer, especially if you're pounding bags of black licorice. But uh, let's say uh, we live to 75 years of age. So multiply that by 75. 82,125 meals is what, on our rough numbers here, that a person eats in a lifetime, right? Don't freaking kill yourself over every single meal and everything. If you want to enjoy a bag of Funyuns, that's not what's going to be what takes you out in the grand scheme of things, probably. Enjoy food. Enjoy things. All in moderation, though. That's how you stay healthy. That's how you stay happy. You don't have to eat just plants or just meat or whatever. Well-balanced diet, but enjoy, enjoy things. And if you want a goddamn bag of Cheetos, eat a bag of Cheetos. Not a full bag. I'm not talking this. Don't. Montana Max told me to eat a giant bag of Cheetos. No, but if you want some Cheetos, eat some Cheetos once in a while. It's not a big deal. If you want a Big Mac once in a while, it ain't going to kill you. But that's 80,000 meals, right? You got to enjoy that. That's like one of the, you know, human things that we have is our taste. And that's why I love cooking. And that's why I've fallen so in love with doing this and teaching and showing and sharing is because there's so many flavors. There's so many different ways that we can enjoy meals with each other and all that good stuff. So enough of me on my soap block. Let's start. Uh, 
preparing what's going to go in our pitas. What? Soap block. Soap block, soap box, whatever. All right. So we're going to start prepping here uh, what's actually going to go into our pita with our meat. So we're going to be doing a uh, couple different things here. I'm going to grab a fresh bowl so we have a place to put all of our goodies here. I'm going to be using my lovely Gunter Wilhelm Nakiri knife because that is my vegetable chopping machine. All right. So what should I do first? Let's do these. So the first thing we're going to do is cucumbers. If you don't, uh, don't get the big giant ones. You can barely see this on camera. Let me flip it over. Use the mini cukes. Mini cuke is so adorable and delicious. Mini cuke. Uh, also known as English cucumbers, right? People are like, I had no idea there was such a small cucumber out there. And all we're going to do is cut them in half and then go right down and chop them into lovely little bits. These are going inside a pita with our meat. So I'll show you here on camera. Let's flip it back over. Just little guys, just like that. Little cukes, little bitty chunks, right? See if I can move this bowl here just for a second. Look at that size right there, right? So split it. Little half moons. That's all we're doing here. English cucumbers, these are like mini, mini cukes. Never heard of it. Seriously? They're awesome. And here's the other thing, right? Because the big cucumbers, here, let me address you properly and set on that camera. The big cucumbers, right, they have way more water retention in them, and they have way less flavor because of that. Think of this as like concentrated cucumber flavor. It's not going to be anything that you're like, oh, my God, i got to get this cucumber flavor off my tongue. But it's going to be more intense flavor because they don't have as much water in them. Here, I'll cut one right down the center and show you on camera. Being that you are talking about mini cukes. But you see, I know it's kind of hard to there. Look at the density of the flesh on that. He is talking mini cukes. Look at the density of the flesh on that versus when you get like, you know, your traditional cucumber that it's going to have way more water. You know, when you cut those, uh, you can feel the textural difference. But, uh, yeah, you're going to have a little bit more uh, stronger flavor with these. Great for dips. If you have, like, a, a relish tray, put those. you can do those and then dip them in ranch or whatever, you know, kind of dip you're using. But uh, a lot of flavor in comparison to the large ones, which makes them great also, obviously, uh, for fillings like we're doing uh, with our dish tonight and uh, salads. Trust me, next time you're at the store, pick up some uh, English cucumbers or they have like bags with these mini ones in them. And they'll probably have like a smiling child that's like, we love vegetables. But yeah, trust me, give it a go. You'll love them. You'll love them. Gosh, it is a crazy Friday night. It gets hot. There's been so many dogs, cars honking, people yelling, somebody randomly singing and belting out their heart, which I applaud. I, in my previous life, before I became barbecue chef competition extraordinaire is I was a professional musician. So, I mean, sing your heart out, girl. You do it. You do you. If that's your passion, I love it. And the crazy geese. We got it all. All sorts of species here at Montana Max National Forest.
I wonder, I'll have to look, see if I can actually apply our backyard to be a state park. Jen loves when I have these ideas. I can tell them about my other ideas. So this week, I'm not going to tell you all the things because I'm, I'm still working on uh, all the details here on what's going to happen and how I'm going to execute everything. But the application is in, uh, so it's like pretty much official. I just got to get everything lined up. But I am uh, planning next spring to, uh, in the world of food, break Guinness Book World Records. I've got my application in. Jen is scared for a lot of reasons. Safety probably being the biggest one. But I'm going to mitigate that. I'm going to be responsible, and I'm going to get a Guinness Book of World Record. And then records. That's probably the biggest thing is I was like, I'm going to get a bunch of them. But anyways, we're going to start with one. And that's going to start in the spring. I got my application in, so it's only a matter of time. Not that one. Not the first one. Jen said, is it going to involve a spaceship or an airplane? There are a couple of records I'm looking at that may involve a spaceship or an airplane, and they are related to food, and I will let your imagination go with that. If you're just joining us, we're just working here with some mini cucumbers that we're using as a filling here in our Kafka-style pita pockets. I'll go ahead and flip this up. Let's see if I can. I'm going to step off camera here. I'll here. I'll flip it over to the table cam. See if I can. Just pan up just a touch. There we go. And you'll see that we have our kofta, which is Turkish seasoned burger patties that are cooking away on the Traeger over there. So those are working. They're already getting some nice color. I got the super smoke rocking on an Ironwood 885. Excessive amount of space for six burgers, but I don't care. I love cooking on it. Uh, and then we're preparing the filling right now with mini cukes or cucumbers. If you're on close personal terms, right, you can call them cukes. That we're just cutting into little half moon shapes here to make a fresh and authentic filling. And this is very similar to a gyro or hero or whatever you want to call them. Both are acceptable in my book. And we're well on our way to flavor country. I'm trying to move these along because I also, next up, I'm going to have to get after some uh, cherry tomatoes here. And we were talking about the, the flavor of a mini cucumber versus a regular one. And I can tell you right now, I got the bowl right over here, and I can smell them. I can smell them, which will translate to that flavor that we were talking about just a minute ago. More flavor that you can layer into your dish, the more of an adventure it's going to be for you, your guests, your family, whoever you may be cooking for, their taste buds, right? So we want to layer flavors. That's the biggest thing that I preach all the time on here is you want to create an experience for the taste buds, so you want to layer different flavors. We did kebabs on last week's Friday barbecue party, and the tip that I can give you without going back and watching the full episode or whatever is that each piece of our kebab, we did two different ones. We did a beef one, and then we did a shrimp one, but each component of the kebab we offered up a different seasoning on. A lot of people when they make kebabs, right? And I'll, I'll chop while I cut here so we can keep things moving along. But uh, a lot of people when they're making kebabs, they put everything onto the skewer and then what they do is they'll just take their seasoning and run it over the whole kebab, same seasoning. We seasoned, seasoned each one of our components differently so as they're eating their kebab in the different components of the kebab, they're getting a slightly different flavor profile. They all work together in conjunction, but it's not just like, well, I've tasted this seasoning all the way through this long kebab. 
they're getting a different experience with each different thing. And then a lot of people, when they eat kebabs, they don't just eat them off the stick. They'll put everything onto their plate and maybe combine different elements like the onion with the beef or things like that, right? And so then when they're combining those, they're going to get a different sensation. And it's going to keep their mouths uh, interested in what's going on because they're going to get a different experience with each bite. Just stepping over to the side here. I didn't leave you. Just got to use my lovely Traeger bottle opener. Because we're down one beer. It's a Friday night barbecue party. And thank you so much for being with us. If you like what you see, you like what you're learning, make sure you hit that follow button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We love having you here. And if you have any questions, right, about cooking or whatever it is, don't be afraid to hop in that chat and ask them. It doesn't even have to be about what we're cooking tonight. We do this. I do this. We do this. When you dip, I dip, we dip. And when I dip, you dip, we dip. Uh, we do this professional cooking competitively on a professional level. And uh, whatever you're cooking, we probably have some sort of experience with it. Love to help you make your dishes better, whatever it is. So don't be afraid to hop in that chat, ask questions. And if you don't want to ask questions in the chat, you're like, I think this is stupid. I don't want to ask that. I feel embarrassed. That's all right. I get that. We all start somewhere, right? So you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. But feel free to jump in my DMs, too. You can always get in touch with me there. And I'm happy, more than happy, to help you uh, with a dish or cooking advice, anything like that. So right now, we're jumping in and just chopping up some cherry tomatoes, right? We all got these in our store. They come in the cool little glass, not glass, plastic bubble. Lots of flavor in cherry tomatoes. We're just cutting them in half and then cutting them again for a nice little quarter. The other great thing about this is now we're adding more color, right? Talking about people eating with their eyes, eating with their eyes, right? So they're going to see multiple colors. That's important. You don't want just your dish all looking like one blah brown or beige or whatever. You want people to see it and they go, oh my, that's so colorful. It looks delicious. And then when they take a bite of it, they go, oh my, that is delicious. So we're going to add tomatoes in here. Cut them through. Cut them through. Very nice. Make sure when you're cutting tomatoes, you use a sharp knife. A lot of people will cut tomatoes. Here, let's flip it over and see if I can get a close enough shot here. I'll zoom it in even. We'll zoom it in and tilt her down. Too much. There we go. So when people cut tomatoes, right, what you want to do is slice. Use the blade of your knife, right? It's sharp for a reason. So you take it and slice it. People, when they're cutting tomatoes, this is going to be hard to do. Let's see if I can hold it there. They just want to press. They just want to press down. Then you lose all the guts, all the flavor there. It just comes gushing out. So you don't want that. Use the blade of your knife, right? and slice the tomato. Let the knife do the work for you. Then everything stays intact. Here, we'll cut it back over here. See, I've got lost a little bit of guts. You're gonna lose a little bit, especially if a tomato's softer, but here, let's grab a fresh one. Clear this back so you can see the fresh white cutting board. There's our tomato. Just gonna grab it. It's kind of like a magic trick. I wish I really wish I could make this thing disappear on camera for you people. And then it'd be just like, and then there's no tomato. Fortunately, I'm not that good at sleight of hand. So we're going to take it, but we're just going to go, you, let the blade of our knife do the work. Look at that. No guts come out, right? Proper knife technique, very simple, 
And then we got it. Well, let's do it again here now that it's halved. There we go. As opposed to, like I just showed you, when people take their knife and they just press down, which I'll show you. And then you get guts squishing out. Then when you go to cut it the other way, which I'll show you, see that? I know it's kind of hard to see, it doesn't, but it just bled out the side there. You lose all that flavor, you're just left with the rind. You are going to get a little of that regardless. I mean, like I said, if tomatoes are softer and things like that, you get that occasionally. But you want to minimize that. You want to keep them whole so when people get that bite, right, it's all about that bite. They get the full flavor of that tomato. They get that burst of a nice red cherry tomato. You don't want them just like, oh, well, that tasted like nothing. And then all that work you're doing by smashing your tomatoes is for naught. All right. Let's see if that's enough here. Let's mix it up a little bit. We'll do a few more. Do a few more. Kind of want to even, even Steven, uh, cucumber to tomato ratio. We're getting pretty close, so I'll just do a few more here. Slice away, slice away. There we go. That's looking fairly good. I got a lot of cucumber in there. Let's do a couple more, just a couple more. Because we got two more components that we're going to add. You'll notice the order here. We got the meat going on first. That gives us plenty of time because we're doing low and slow because we want that nice smoky flavor in with our kofta style meat. Get everything all prepped up that's going into the side. See, that's that guy's a soft one. I just don't even want him in here. He didn't make the cut. Did not make the cut. All right. That's pretty good. Flip her on over. There we go. Got a pretty good mix here. Cucumber, tomato, love and life. Let's get the other components added. And these ones will not be so meticulous. I've got the ominous black pepper. This is just going to add a little bit of extra flavor. You prep it just like you would any other pepper. And pull the insides out. And you'll see here, the inside of the pepper is green, just like any other bell pepper. It's just the outside is darker. This is a great Halloween trick as well. If you want to uh, mess with your kids, tell them you're feeding them rotten food. It's not. It's a joke. Put that on your prank channel. That's what everyone's into, right? The pranks. They like the pranks. All right. We're just going to cut this up, and we're going to dice these guys as well. That's just going to add another tone, another small element of flavor. Don't need a ton of them. Here we go. Super easy. Super easy. And Jen actually picked these up from a local farmer's market. Another great place, besides the grocery store, where you're supporting local people, right? 
is what they do for their living is raise these kind of vegetables and stuff and then they not only raise them but they go sell them themselves but they're super fresh and they're oftentimes cheaper than anything you'd buy at the grocery store so there we go got these bad boys into the salad slightly different texture different flavor different color smell wonderful all right and then the last thing that we're going to add as far as ingredients to this is we are going to just add some red onion bunch of different kinds of onion well not a bunch but you know three or four that we use like yellow white red those are the three big ones if you're doing an uncooked onion for salads or fillings or things like that anything that's uncooked or if you're putting it just like circles on top of a burger right use a red onion that is the best flavored onion do they taste like green peppers yes they do they taste like a green pepper they just look a little different uh, but if you're gonna add uh, an onion that's uncooked to a dish you'll get the most bang for your buck in flavor out of a red onion that's why like, when you see pictures of burgers on the television it's always got a red onion on it that's why just peel the skin off here there we go probably need about half of it right probably won't need the whole thing in there slicey dicey slicey dicey hey Al's here Al Gaxetter from Pig's Eye Barbecue based out of Lakeville Minnesota thank you for joining us Al what we're doing is we're making Copta style pita pockets so over here on the ironwood I have uh, a beef patty that I made up in a hamburger style. We're going to break it up later, but that's seasoned with cardamom, uh, coriander, allspice. What else did I put in there? Cumin. But the big one is, where is it? Yes, turmeric. Turmeric is tasting it, taking our taste buds. That's a big, big uh, Turkish deal. Very similar to like you would season a hero. So we do that in patty form, and we're using Wagyu ground beef because we want it to be fancy. We're not just using your standard ground beef. We're getting all Wagyu on you. Uh, Wagyu ground beef, and then right now we're making the other filling that's going to go inside of it. So we prepped up some mini cucumbers, cut those in uh, to little half moons, cherry tomatoes, black peppers. What? Yes, you heard me correctly. Black peppers. Tastes just like green peppers. Here, I'll see if I can pull you out the... Check it out, Al. See if I can find the camera. That's the outside. Much darker. And then I dropped that, but that's all right. There we go. But the inside, just like a green pepper. Tastes just like a green pepper. Oh, that's what was going on. But anyway, so we just added that, and now we're going to add a little red onion. And that's going to be pretty much it besides a little basic seasoning that is going in to the pita pocket. So, yeah, the, and that's the other thing. These are served in pitas. So we're going to do that for a real Turkish-style traditional feel. So red onion going in. And thank you for joining us, Al. Yeah, man, it came. I got my Hall of Flame of flag. I had to get up and represent with it. I was pretty excited. I actually wore it and ran around the block like Rocky style when it came in the mail. Jen was uh, super embarrassed by that, but I didn't care. All right, so we got all this stuff. I actually am going to throw a little bit more onion in there. We want it to be equal parts, right? So when they get these bites, they're not just getting the same bite of just cucumber and then maybe one tomato sneaks in there or something like that you want equal bite all the way through that may be the competition side of me coming through a little bit because in a lot of competitions that I do whether it be culinary fight club or steak or whatever the judges only take one bite so you have to have all that flavor 
that whole flavor profile for that whole dish rolled up into one single bite. Or as I like to say on stream, one singular sensation. So, but you want that for your guests or anybody that you're cooking for, you know, they don't want to be like, this bite's awesome, this bite sucks, this bite's meh, whatever. So consistency is key all the way through that. And speaking of competition, they just announced today too, we qualified, we're number one, number one in the state of Minnesota, number one qualifier uh, for World Food Championships this year. So that was like super exciting. Uh, but they canceled the actual main event, which was supposed to be in Dallas at the start of November because of the whole COVID thing, you know. Uh, but they have released a virtual competition that I'll be taking part in with that. So a lot of new categories and stay tuned is I'll keep you all apprised of what we're throwing down the gauntlet on that as well. All right, everything's in the bowl. Tomatoes, cucumbers, red onion, black pepper, all together. Now we're gonna give it just a little drizzle of olive oil here. I'm actually just gonna put on a glove so my hands don't, my hands don't get all oily. And we're gonna mix everything up with my size two small glove. Get that olive oil to cover everything. And then to season this, real basic, right? We're just going to use salt and pepper. We're going to get in that pepper there. Then we're going to add in our salt. Rule of thumb is more salt than pepper. It's real interesting. I've worked in restaurants and things throughout the year, but uh, the different levels that people like pepper is always intriguing. Some people are just like, Pour it on, pour it on. Give me that pepper. Other people are just like a little bit will do them. So be conscious of that when you're seasoning uh, up what you're cooking if you're cooking for, you know, a barbecue party like we're doing tonight. Interesting side fact on uh, pepper for you. Well, I'm just mixing up our seasoning here with our uh, filling that's going to go inside our pita pits is that pepper cannot be... Uh, digested by the human body, right? It's too coarse. It's too solid. It's one of the few things that uh, our stomachs, I mean, we pass it through, but people that eat a lot of pepper, they actually find like deposits of it in their small intestines because it like will settle and it doesn't get digested. It doesn't get dissolved. And people actually have pepper like for years, like sitting in their system. It won't kill you. Well, as we discussed earlier, it, Anything might kill you, like the good dude who ate too much black licorice, but everything in moderation. But yeah, they'll actually find pepper deposits in people's systems that have ate a lot of pepper in their life. The more you know. Insert the more you know graphic from 1987. God, I need more graphics. Where's my graphics department? I need the more you know thing. Write that down. Yeah, he at work. That's right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on Fiverr later and be like, hey, can anybody animate the more you know? All right. So we got our filling for the heroes done. I am going to take a quick temperature on our Wagyu burgers. They've been rocking the super smoke, and we're up to about 125 degrees, which they're probably going to take on about as much smoke is they are now, so I'm actually gonna kick up the temperature. Let's get them cooking. Let's get them finished off. We're looking for uh, internal temperature, so I'm gonna kick it up actually to 350. Uh, we're looking for an internal temperature, of course. I've said this many times with any sort of ground product of 165 degrees. If you like it a little bit less, I'm not here to judge. I like my burgers like that too. But for the sake of safe eating and advising the public, 165 is the serve safe temperature. That's why some restaurants will not serve you a medium rare burger because they don't want to kill you. But if you like that, like I do, I'm from Montana. I was raised on uh, medium rare burgers, like in the restaurants and stuff. That's 
you can get them like that uh by all means more power to you but no the temperature we're going to cook when we're doing live is 165. staying alive staying alive ha 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 staying alive need a couple more beers before i can hit that last high note but the rest of it was pretty good the rest of it was pretty bg-tastic all right so we need a sauce we're not just going to cram beef and then random vegetables into a pita pocket and call it a day why because that's boring and we can do better and it's super easy to do so grab a bowl step one nailed it treat yourself at the friday night barbecue party we are successful in grabbing a bowl thank you everyone for joining us as usual i hope you're having a drink of whatever you're choosing and having a good time and ready to get your weekend kicked off right and we are honored that you chose to spend a little bit of your time this weekend with us here. Jen's forced to, but you are not. And so I really do appreciate that. All right. So we're going to be using a little Greek yogurt. And then we are going to be using some tahini here. What? My little yellow polka dot bikini? I think not. We are using tahini, which also comes from the Middle Eastern region of the world. So we're really going full feet in with this flavor profile. And I am going to grab a spoon. All right, as you all know, my best spoon in the world and my favorite spoon in the world, Spoonie McSpoonerson. I can't do an episode without him. He is here and he is ready to go to work. All right, Spoonie. So, first things first, a little onion skin hit in that bowl. Get out of there, onion skin. Nobody likes you. We're going to add in Greek yogurt. And so, like, I'll put up a recipe. It'll be like a half cup, right? If you're making it for whatever uh, size of crowd. Here's the key to remember for this equal parts so equal parts greek yogurt to equal parts tahini and i need a smaller spoon because tahini is very oily and when it sets you want to make sure you give it a good stir because it'll separate on you and tahini is used if you haven't used tahini it's a great ingredient to have it's a little bit pricier for like a bottle this size that i'm holding here it's like 10 bucks but uh, it's worth it to have it around because you can use it for a lot of things. This is a big time uh, primary ingredient in hummus. So if you want kind of a flavor profile or something to attach this to, hummus would be the one that would be most closely associated with tahini. All right. That's probably pretty good. Probably pretty good. And then we're going to mix this up. All right, Spoonie, you ready to do your magic? And we're just going to mix our Greek yogurt and our tahini and mix it up. Ah, already smelling good, but we can do better. Yes. Because we're also going to add a little green color to this. So we're going to take and we're going to add cilantro. Rough cut it. You want it fairly small. Pull out any big stems. Don't want stems. So this is going to end up being roughly measurement wise that we're throwing in here i don't want this bowl to fall off that would be great lose my whole tahini sauce i can hear those burgers working or we're jumping up to temperature that's what's great about the traeger it takes no time at all we're already rocking at 350 over here let's get some more of this Pull her off.
Choppy, choppy. Easy, easy. And we'll go back over it. Once we got the main chop, use your knife as a lever. We're essentially mincing, mincing, mincing cilantro. And that's going to go in there as well. Save a little bit on that on the side here. Because we'll use it for garnish at the end. It's a little extra fresh flavor pop. Another thing I love about having a big flat bladed knife like this, cleaning up your cutting board, so easy, so awesome. All right, let's stir that in. Looking beautiful. And then this, we don't need a bunch of fancy ass seasonings either. We're just gonna season this up with salt. The main season, the star of the show, is gonna be the beef in there that we season with all the different seasonings. That's gonna be the main star. Everything else is a supporting actress in this. All right, so we season that up. Then the last thing we wanna do for authenticity purposes and anytime you're using like a heavy cream or like yogurt or any sort of heavier dairy product, I love throwing in citrus because that helps cut through the cut through the flavor there and give it a little spark. So I'm gonna just cut off the lemon here. And real quickly, check for any seeds. You don't want anybody biting into a lemon seed. And we're gonna add that in. Bam, lemon juice. A little bit more, we can get more out of there. There we go. And we'll stir up. Stir it up. So Jen over here is giving me turmeric facts. So she's saying this is a healthy dish. Don't tell people that if you're watching the stream. I don't want my reputation to get out that I'm some sort of healthy cook, like Paula Dean up in here. And I'm like, I have two sticks of butter. Turmeric's healthy. Why? Because it's anti-inflammatory. So good for your joints. What else you got? Rich in antioxidants. Lots of health benefits, including prevention of heart disease, Alzheimer's, and cancer. So, and arth arthritis in what? In lack of erection? Oh, depression. Not the other one. Well, if you have the other one, you're going to be depressed. So anyways, that tastes good. Right where I want it. Super easy. There's our traditional sauce, very similar to a hero sauce, but with that lemon, it's going to have that little extra zing, that little extra pop, right? Now, there's two ways you can apply this sauce when we get into plating here, which we're damn close. I'm going to cut up a little bit more cilantro, just a little bit, and a little bit of parsley, and I'm going to mix them together because we're going to use those for a fun garnish at the end. Uh, but you can use a knife, right? Because we're going to use uh, pita pockets. You can use just a hero style like pita where you just fold it over. You can serve it like that, absolutely. But we're going to be using uh, a pita wheel. Now, when you cut them in half, they actually open up, and then you can stuff everything in there. Super fun. Uh, if you're in a party environment or even tailgating or something like that, it's a great, you know, hand food. You don't need a plate. Kids love it. So yeah, we're using a pita pocket. If you want to feel all state fair-like, just put a little piece of aluminum foil around it. And a choppa, 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 choppa. 
You know, with the World Food uh, Championship deal, we qualified uh, not only first place in Minnesota overall, but uh, we're in for 2021 because it carries over. Our qualification carries over. Parkity says, looks tasty. It is. It's going to be damn tasty. But uh, we're actually going to be competing in the sandwich category. So we've been making a lot of sandwiches lately. And that's been good because it's like giving us practice and like ideas. Maybe at World Food we'll have to break out the Taki crusted chicken sandwich. That could be risky, but that's how I live. Yeah, it was so good. You got to take risks in food sport, though. You can't just be like, and here's a plain sandwich. Can I win now? We're talking about 10,000 G's, man. $10,000. You can't just play it safe. You got to live a little bit. You got to live on flavor's edge. Take the leap. Right? You can't be like, and here's, here's some Velveeta, and I grilled it on some Wonder Bread. I hope you enjoy it. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. But anyways, since this is a pouch, I don't know if it technically qualifies, but I like sandwich practice. All right, let's get a temp here on our burgers and see how close we are. We're going to be cruising right along here. Yep, not long now. Let's give them a little flip over, give that other side a little love. Oh, oh, how I wish you were here. And I'm not talking about the Incubus song. Oh, no. I'm going to come over and get a little better camera angle of this burger angle. Flip it over so I can see what the heck I'm doing. There we go. There we go. Let's flip some burgers together, shall we? I used to, when I played music professionally, always be concerned about, you know, like what my bass guitar, like, knew what the body and the neck and what kind of woods are used. Now I'm like the same way, except about, you know, my accessories. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a rosewood handle. Used to be like a rosewood body or a rosewood neck and maple neck. Oh yeah, can you see that quality? That's rosewood here. That's how I grill. So these are looking beautiful. Let's see if I can get one close up to the camera here. I always have a hard time doing this because it's in reverse. Beautiful. See that parsley in there? It's going to be a lovely flavor component. These have all the different spices that we used as well as parsley and garlic. All working in there. Not long now. We're going to be ready to rock and roll. We're going to be ready to start putting things together. So anyways, uh, I kind of trailed off earlier, and I do apologize for that, uh, when I was talking about our tahini yogurt sauce, right? So there's a couple different ways that you can go about presenting that. So number one, you can use a knife and spread it on the inside of the pita and just do it that way. Or if you're like me and you have... A drizzle spoon it's gonna to be too thick to use as a drizzle whether you have a spoon that's special or not like I do that's gonna be way too thick to actually do a drizzle same thing if you're doing like uh, Mexican kind of cooking Hispanic fare uh, and you're using a sour cream if you want to get a drizzle versus just a clump right we've all been there we've all pulled the sour cream out and we're like whoop <laughs> And we plop it on there, right? If you want something that's a little bit more elegant, if you're taking a picture or if you're presenting, you're not going to lose flavor, but all you have to do is add a little water. Stir it in. Not a whole bottle, but add it like a tablespoon at a time and mix it up. If you've seasoned and used your ingredients correctly, you shouldn't have a problem with loss of flavor. 
Sorry. Hey, excuse me for one second. Don't you do it. Come on. You're coming outside. Yeah, I caught her. All right, everyone. This is Cammie. And I just got Cammie uh, attempting to pee on the carpet. So... Uh, but she didn't. She was a good girl, but I saw her going to where she, she's, she's our older girl. She's uh, about 16 years old, so I had to catch her real quick and make sure she uses the potty outside. That will happen when you're live streaming. All right. Took care of that. The plug was just loose. All right. We got all sorts of issues going on. Anyways, that was Cammy. Glad you got to meet her. Go pee outside. Now she's like, oh, there's food on the ground. I'm going to smell all this crap. Uh, <laughs> and we lost all of our viewers. Oh, mom loves Cammy because they're like, where the hell did he go? Why is he holding a dog? Is he cooking dog? This isn't acceptable. All right, so thanks for bearing with me there. I saw her going to her no-no spot where she makes no-nos on the carpet, and we can't be having that because we're having a barbecue party. You don't want somebody crashing the party like Cammy is here. Anyways, we're just about done with the burgers. Just waiting for them to get to temp. And then we are going to put everything together. We are mere degrees away from this deliciousness. And they're all sitting here. I'm temping everything right now. They're all sitting at 150 uh, degrees, 151. They're all at that nice even temperature because they're all the same thickness. So they're all going to finish up at the same time. Taco Maniac! Thanks for being here, brother. Good to see you as always. We're making kofta style uh, pita sandwiches tonight, or burger ass deals. We're just getting ready to plate up everything. I appreciate you dropping in as always. Uh, we just had an interesting experience here because my dog about peed on the carpet. So I don't know if you got to see that portion of the show. Yep, and there she is. She's peeing right there. Thank God it wasn't inside because guess what? After I get done making these awesome sandwiches, that would have been my second, second stream tonight. But she, her stream was outside, not inside, so that's good. So anyways, we're having fun, we're having drinks, thanks for being here. Just waiting, we're just mere degrees away from pulling off our meat off the Traeger here, and we're gonna start plating everything together. All right. And I'm gonna get out a fresh uh, cutting board here. I have saved half of our lemon, because we're gonna use that in the garnish as well. But when we pull our meat out, gonna put that on this so you guys can see it and we're gonna cut it we're gonna chunk it up so it has a little bit more authentic feel you could serve this on a bun and I'll give you a, here's your other pro shopping tip right you go to the grocery store and you're like I've never bought pita pockets where the hell do I find them they're gonna be in three one of three places they may be in your deli if they're not in your deli they may be in the ethnic food aisle next to the tortillas at Cub Foods in Minnesota, they are in the bread aisle. They are about midway down on the top shelf. <laughs> so that was the longest part of my shopping experience is tracking down frickin' pitas. So let's get these guys actually prepped before we pull the meat out. We'll just cut them in half. Look for the pita wheels or pouches, right? If you see either one of those, they'll work just fine. You cut them open. There you go. Hello! Fill me with good food! Awesome. Art. Here. Quack, 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 quack. So we're going to go ahead and cut these in half. So we have little pouches to put all of our goodies in.
What are you doing, dog? There ain't nothing down there for you. When we get done, usually the dogs stay inside the whole time we're streaming, just so they don't run into any cameras or cables or anything like that. But, yeah, she's fine. Uh, but when we let them out, like when we're done, uh, they just scour this area like, like scavengers. Anything I drop is fair game. They're like, there's got to be something for me. There's got to be something for me. But they're awesome. And she's 16, so she can eat whatever the hell she wants now. She's earned it. All right. Thank you for joining us. We're just getting ready to play it up here with our Copta style pita party. It's Friday night barbecue party on Montana Max. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram if you haven't already. We do a lot of fun, different content over there. We've got Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. And if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the stream tonight, Make sure you hit that follow button on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube and hit the little bell so you can get notifications when we go live. Every Friday night we have a barbecue party and as always, you're always invited. So make sure you join us and have a good time. Grab the drink of your choice and we'll get on like Donkey Kong. On Sundays we do game day smoke down where I won my lovely Traeger flag that Mr. Gackstatter pointed out to us earlier with our massive meatball hoagie. But every Sunday at 3 o'clock we're doing tailgating fair and awesome game day recipes, whether you're into football, baseball, basketball, hockey, or you like supporting your favorite eSport fan on Twitch, this is the food that you're going to want to be sporting when you're rooting for your favorite team or person if maybe you like singles tennis. Uh, and then, of course, Wednesday we have Wild Game Wednesdays where we get wild. And by that, I mean we're cooking wild game. And stuff you're not used to seeing, we'll teach you how to make it with traditional meats, but we'll be cooking elk, bear, antelope, we did goose this Wednesday. All kinds of different crazy ass shit that gets shot down in the wild. We eat it, we make it delicious, and we'll show you how to do it at home. So thank you for being here. Thanks for joining us on whatever stream it is. And always make sure to, you gotta have those notifications on because sometimes we do special events too that we're just like, you know what? Let's do this. And how else will you know? Unless you had your notifications turned on. All right, there goes Jen. See her back there. Wave, Jen. She's like, I did it. I waved. And then, of course, you always want to make sure to follow us and subscribe, too, because coming soon, we're going to be doing awesome giveaways and promotions and things like that that you can only get on Montana Max Barbecue TV. All right. We got to be getting right close here. Just moments away. Here's your other tip. If you're cooking on a Traeger or if you're cooking on a kettle with charcoal, if you're cooking on a kettle with charcoal, right? Or a gas burner. You got like a Weber that's gas. Don't cook with all your damn burners on. Cook with one half of them on. It's called dual zone cooking, right? Same thing with the Traeger. The middle's gonna be cooler than it is on the outside because the heat's coming around the outside. If you're cooking on a kettle, Move all your coals over to one side, and then the other side will be your cool side. So, same thing with gas. You got two burners, only turn on one of them. It's still gonna be hot in there, but it's not gonna be as hot. You cook on the indirect zone first, and then you move it to the hot zone to finish it and get that sear. On the Traeger, it's right along the front line here. So we're gonna move everything right up to the front edge, because that's where that heat's coming up to create that convection style cooking. We're going to get a real nice sear on the, on the bottom of these burgers here just to finish them off. This is like last stage cooking. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. After that, it's about time to play. It's about time to eat. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, to review, real quick, before we plate all this beautiful awesomeness up. Copta Pita Pocket Party.
right? So we've done Wagyu ground beef. Higher fat content, more juicy, gonna be delicious. If you're using a ground beef that isn't Wagyu, because not everyone's like, oh, I've got Wagyu beef here. 80-20 uh, blend. 80% meat, 20% fat, that's gonna create your best burger if you're just making burgers or whatever, but get the 80-20. And we've got in there, fresh chopped garlic, fresh chopped parsley, cardamom, turmeric. What else do we got? Coriander, allspice, and cumin. That's all the spice combination we use. Roughly uh, a teaspoon-ish area. I'll put the recipe up on the website here eventually. Uh, and then we seasoned all that up, mixed it all together, made the patties. They're on, they're cooked. We get up, we're gonna cut them up. So it's got a more authentic style to it. We're gonna chunk it up a little bit. Then we have our lovely salad, right? Salad consists of black pepper, which is like a green pepper. It just has a black outside that's really, really dark green. Onion, red onion, use red onion. Cherry tomatoes and mini cukes with a little bit of olive oil. This is just seasoned with salt. Very simple. Star of the show is going to be the meat here. That's the Turkish whole deal. We're going to make that meat the star. So that's the supporting actor with that salad. And then we have our Greek yogurt tahini sauce. Okay. Also very simple, also just seasoned with salt, but we have Greek yogurt in here, and then tahini, equal parts. Tahini will be in your ethnic food section of the, the grocery store. Not grocery department, but grocery store. Right in your ethnic food aisles with all your Indian, Turkish, Middle Eastern area type stuff. Uh, so we got equal parts Greek yogurt, equal parts tahini, uh, about two to three tablespoons of lemon juice and salt. Noxious changed his name. You're like an enigma wrapped inside a riddle. I thought you were supposed to be streaming right now, brother. What are you doing? Either way, thanks for being here. You arrived at a great time. We're just recapping the recipe and we're getting ready to plate. So you showed up at the great, great time. And then of course we got pita wheels. Look for pita pockets. You don't have pita pockets. They may be pita wheels. They come in a whole circle. Oh, you are streaming. So you're like joining us while streaming. Well, I feel honored and I feel slightly famous. So thank you for that. Pita wheel, cut it in half. Then we got a lovely pocket to put all of our goodies in. Bam, bam, bam. Jen's back. Uh, oh, the other thing in the uh, tahini yogurt sauce is there is fresh diced cilantro as well. We're using fresh herbs, fresh spices when possible. Whenever you can, use the fresh stuff. It doesn't cost any more. In fact, oftentimes it's cheaper. Use fresh. Use fresh. Tastes great. All right. So, I mean, really at this point, treat yourself. Noxious is here. He joined us. He's actually streaming right now. So that's great. He's dropping in. We're like on Twitch together. It's like super rad. So. No, that I'll explain how it works later. Don't worry. I'll draw one of those like John Madden. And I'm like, and then the defense goes here. That's the other thing I need. All right. For game day smoke down. Somebody's got to find me the way to do the John Madden like drawing circles on the screen. So I'm like, you take the burger and then draws over here and it blocks this. And then but, but, kapow football. So I need to draw the yellow lines on the screen like they're doing when they discuss the plays. No, it doesn't work and I don't have a touch screen. No, that's not a touch screen. Whatever. Anyways, treat yourself. Thanks for joining us. Noxious, thanks for being here. Taco Maniac, Al, my mom, my dad, Skull and Bones, if you're still here. Thanks everyone for being here. We're getting ready to play it up. And of course, Kansas City Gin. Who's drinking her Kansas City cider? Cheers. All right, love you, babe. Let's get a temp. Let's see, we should be where we need to be. I'm gonna pull these off. You're always hungry. Yep, and we're where we need to be. I'm going to pull my pita pockets. 
off to the side here for just a quick moment. Let's get our Kofta burgers off the grill. We could have cooked these a lot faster at a higher temp. We started these with the slow smoke on at 225 because I really wanted to get that lovely smoke flavor onto these. Let's flip her back over to the main cam. We got our burgers here. Jen is hungry. Jen is ready to eat. We're going to take our knife and we're going to cut these up into bite-sized chunks. Yep, that is right where we need to be at 165 degrees. Let's see if I can find the camera here. There we go. See, that's cooked all the way through. That is the safe way to eat ground meat. If you like it a little pinker, that's okay. That's on you. I'm live right now, but I got to support you too. Brother, you're the best, man. Everyone needs to be more like noxious. Thank you for being here, brother. I'm going to figure out how to do that too. I'll have to make my own separate name. All right. So let's just cut these up into bite-sized chunks. A little bit bigger than bite-sized. You don't want them just to swallow a whole chunk. You want them to take a bite with everything that's going on. So we're just going to cut them up here. Like I said, if you wanted to serve this as a burger style, that's totally cool too. Use a good bun though. Go get brioche or something out of your bakery. You go at all this time to get all these seasonings and things like that. Don't just throw it on a basic bun. That's for basic bitches. Don't do that. Don't shake your head at me. I can say basic bitches. The kids say it. I'm hip. I'm with it. Don't tell me how to live my life, lady. All right. So we got that all chopped up, as you can see, right in front of me here. And then let's grab... A spoon here so I'm not gonna do the drizzle I did bring out some water we can do a drizzle I'll probably do a drizzle after we get off the air for a lovely picture so we're gonna take our Greek yogurt and tahini sauce and just do a nice coating on the inside of the pita pocket there we go Rocking and rolling. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay down a little bed of our salad that we made. Right here. So get those onions. Make sure you get tomatoes. Make sure it's all mixed together nicely. And then we're going to add in a few nice pieces. There we go, of our kofta style meat. And then we're gonna top it off again with a little bit more of that dressing. Not dressing, salad. Lack of better words, right? I'm actually gonna take a little bit of this tahini I am going to mix it with water so you can see what I'm talking about. So we'll just put a little water in there, about a tablespoon. Get my drizzle spoon and we're going to mix it up. So we can do that fun drizzle. Why not? You've come this far. You can't turn back now. You can probably hear that. Drizzle spoon is awesome because it's got a lovely little spout on the end of it. 
I'm losing. I got to focus on one thing at a time here. Get that in there. We got tomatoes and cucumbers. All right. So then we're going to take. Drizzle a little bit of that on there. And we're going to garnish a little bit with our little cilantro and parsley mix. And if I can get this to sit up here for just a quick second, I'm actually, that's what I love about beef, right? It's so versatile. I just made a beef stand for my pita pocket. Think outside the bun, bitches. That's right. That's twice I used that word. Jen is not impressed. But then again, that's about par for the course for me for a Friday. <laughs> so the last thing, we save this lemon, right? We're going to use a zester. If you don't have a zester, any sort of grater will do. Use the fine thing. That fresh citrus that we had in there, we're going to add just the rind of the lemon, which is completely edible. just so there's that initial flavor pop of lemon when they bite into it. All right, now I'm gonna flip it over here. See that? Beef stand. And then I'll hold it up here for you. And there we go. There is our Kopta style pita pocket sandwich. You're gonna have this one. Come here, babe. So once again, we got the Kopta style beef that, beef that we seasoned up along with cucumber, tomato, black pepper, red onion with our tahini and yogurt style sauce, all in a very portable, very stylish pita wheel. Check it out. All right, now welcome as always, Kansas City Jen for the official taste test. There you go, babe. Yeah, it's going to taste good because all the components taste good when they combine together. You like that? This is my kind of food. This is her kind of food. Mm. And it can be your kind of food, too, very easily. You like that? I love it. You love it? It's one of my favorites. Say it into the beard. This is one of my favorites. Good job. We can do that. We've got plenty of uh, beef that we've made up. She's going to eat all that. You do you, girl. Eat all that. Thank you. you no, thank you for being you. Uh, so once again, to review, just real quick, I'm not going to go through every ingredient like I've done several times, but we have our Kopta style beef that we did with Wagyu beef matched with a lovely salad of tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, onions, and a little seasoning with uh, olive oil. And then we top that with a Greek yogurt and tahini sauce that we coat the inside of a pita pocket with and did a slight drizzle over the top, finished with a little cilantro and parsley that's diced really fine with a zest of lemon. That is your Kopta style pita pockets on a Friday night barbecue party. Treat yourself. Thank you so much for being here. It's always a privilege and it's always an honor to be able to cook for you, cook with you. And I can't thank you enough for being here and taking some time out of your Friday to come to our barbecue party. As always, feel so inclined, hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button, turn that bell on for alerts, and you can follow us right there on Instagram. Thank you to everyone that supports us in the food sport arena like Gunter Wilhelm Cutlery, Con Coolers, The Beard Struggle, Croy Valley, and Paws. And you can find links to these in our about sections. Check them out. All great companies. They support us. We support them because we believe in them like they believe in us. And we can't thank you enough. So once again, thanks for being here. Make sure you tune in Sunday, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time for our barbecue party. We're going to be throwing down some awesome tailgate fare. Have an awesome weekend. Be safe. Be good to one another. And as always, for those about to cook, I salute you.